Hello everyone, your voice here and welcome to our channel since you're 101. So for this episode, we're going to feature our first uh, Bitale on the channel. And this uh, Bitale species is known in the market as a silver blue. Now, uh, if you have been checking out Google for uh, the Sensiveria silver, silver blue, you will see that um, it is classified under Kirkii species, but uh, that has been corrected and uh, it has been proven that it is not part of the Kirkii species actually. So if you see uh, some uh, articles in Google or some uh, post in Google with regards to Kirky Eye Silver Blue that is erroneous that is not updated because uh, Silver Blue is part of the Bitale species of Sensiveria and uh, later on we will perhaps uh, discuss the characteristics of uh, Silver Blue and uh, we could uh, point out why it is not part of the Kirkii species of Sensiveria. So this uh, actually is the first Bitale that I have acquired. Uh, I believe it was love at first sight when I saw it because uh, when I searched for it immediately, uh, I decided to purchase one. So that was about uh, five to six years ago so in those in that time uh, this specimen of sil sil silver blue actually did not give me any uh, flower bloom or it has not bloomed in the garden for over six years now so and that is also true with the other bitale species that uh, I own and I'm growing uh, we will also discuss them or feature them one by one so that uh, f you folks can figure out the differences between uh, Bitalays and um, all of them are uh, distinct, have distinct characteristics. So uh, they would be classified as uh, varieties under the uh, Bitalay species of Sansevieria. So the first one that I acquired is actually this plant, this actual plant and um actually uh, this is the oldest part of the clump this is the oldest uh <clears throat> and you can see that it uh, acquired some damage throughout uh, its growth and uh, later on we will discuss uh, the uh, problem about this leaf whether to remove it whether to uh, dissect it so uh, later on we will be discussing uh, what we are going to do with regarding the, the problem with the leaf so actually betale uh, silver blue uh, cannot take extreme uh, sunlight as you can see there are some yellowing that is uh, occurring on the leaf by the way this is a very b big plant and uh, if you have seen the thumbnail uh, it was actually Andres standing beside this specimen of uh, Betale silver blue now I have seen other uh, specimens or other collectors showing their Betale and they grow very very long leaf so actually Betale silver blue can uh, grow as such however mine uh, are, are growing a row set so uh, there's actually uh, uh, a growth uh, method to make them rosette uh, but I will not share it on this episode I will perhaps share it on um, a separate episode for uh, growing rosettes for now though we will be discussing everything about the uh, Bitale silver blue so uh, before we take uh, measurements I will be giving you a brief history about uh, where Betale silver blue was actually collected so uh, this is also to prove that uh, some people are actually calling the Betale species as uh, Mafinga which is very incorrect because Mafinga or Mafinga is just one of the places where you can find Betale so it doesn't follow that all Betales are Mafinga because there are only several Betales that are found in the Place called Mafinga 
Tanzania. So Mafinga is not a species name. It is a location in Africa where some betalays are found. Now silver blue um, is not found in Mafinga. So that depicts the fact that people are calling it uh, Mafinga or the species as Mafinga because silver blue was found by uh, Mr. Gabriel Sani. Uh, he uh, works as a volunteer in a mission in uh, some parts of Tanzania and he was the one who found silver, silver blue in a place called Mikumi National Park. So um, in the sides or in the roads of um, Mikumi National Park, he actually spotted some silver blues. Mikumi to um, Malolo, that is the place in Tanzania where he collected uh, Sansevieria silver blue. So, Sansevieria silver blue was not collected in Mafinga. We cannot call uh, Betale species as Mafinga because some Betales can be found on other locations in Africa. So, silver blue is found in Mikumi to Malolo. So, th that road um, you can actually call silver blue as Sansevieria sp Mikumi because that's where it was found or Sansevieria. Uh, SP Malolo because you can still find find silver blue uh, down that road um, But it was christened with the name uh, silver blue. So once again, uh, Betale silver blue is not a cultivar folks. So um, There are actually uh, Experts that would just slump over uh, or write them as with the open colon uh, close colon or clo uh, open quotation uh, close quotation so um, that actually is four uh, designated four cultivars that is why uh, in olden times or I don't know if there is an update but uh, with regards to varieties they are not written with uh, open quotation or close quotation so silver blue is not a cultivar it should be written with italics instead so that's ac according to what I know but some experts would just uh, I think be lazy and just uh, put them under close quotation and open quotation uh, which will uh, make other people uh, see it as a cultivar which it isn't so folks we have to be uh, careful with using quotations because not all with quotations are cult uh, or uh, we have to specify it as a hybrid as a variety as a cultivar because some people would just uh, put everything in open and close quotations so that would really create uh, some confusion with regards to what uh, sensoria plant we're referring to so right now what we're referring to is a variety of a bitale it is not a cultivar it is not a hybrid so uh, back in the days they would write it as Sansevieria with capital S then Betale it was smaller B uh, four species and then silver blue as a variety should be written as italics not an open and close quotation so I don't know uh, what the update with regards to putting everything in uh, open and close quotation and I don't actually agree with it because that's very confusing um, let's just end it at that note what we are going to do next though is uh, we are going to describe the uh, Sansevier Betale so um, it's quite large I, I can back up a bit so you will be able to see how large uh, this uh, pot is uh, the pot size is actually 10 inches deep and uh, I think it's 10 inches diameter as well so 10 by 10 uh, for the pot size then uh, is the diameter of the pot and then uh, the depth or how deep is the pot is also 10 inches so I, I will need to uh, put the phone or clip the phone so we can actually uh, make or gather some data with regards to the specimen that I am um, <coughs> featuring for you so there you go um, make some adjustments right over there and uh, put the microphone as well as such um, I'll be back in a bit just to get some
some tools for measuring it. Um, Alright folks, so we're back. Uh, so, we will take a measure of the leaf width. Leaf width would be at... I, I'm not sure if you can see that because it's going... It's not focusing when I do it, but it's under three, three point five four uh, D leaf uh, width. That is actually the the widest. This one is also three uh, three point five. So those are the the largest uh, leaf that I can measure. The widest one is the uh, middle part of the leaf. I have one uh, also 3.5 on an average, but there are also thinner ones at only uh, 3 inches in uh, width. So there you go. Uh, trying to focus that and uh, focus back to the plant. Um, like I mentioned, Bitale Silver Blue can grow very, very tall leaf, but uh, in my case, I grow them in a rosette form and not in actually bat form. So my leaf length would be around, uh, not sure if you can see that, but that counts as 10 inches. <clears throat> 10 inches for my leaf length. This one would be uh, at 12 inches. I'd say 12 to 13 is my uh, average for this particular specimen for the um, longest leaf size. So uh, that is for the uh, measure of uh, the plant's leaf length, how uh, large it is. Actually, this very thick uh, leaf uh, leaf. Uh, uh, Sensiveria species so uh, that's one of the um, difference between Kirky eye species and Bitalay species is that the uh, leaf uh, thickness of Sensiveria Bitalay they are very very uh, thick uh, in comparison to the Sensiveria Kirky eye species which are very very uh, very thin uh, species of Sensiveria so I can actually uh, grab a Kirky eye and show it. All right. So folks, this is a sample of the Kirky eye species, and as you can see, the leaf uh, thickness is very very thin. And uh, later on, uh, I can actually, and uh, we're actually planning to cut off the uh, one of the leaf of uh, Centivere betale that I have because it's already having. Uh, damage and uh, before the uh, this damage this is the one that I'm talking about um, I'm, I don't know if I can adjust the camera so you can see it all right there you go so this uh, we're talking about this leaf and uh, I'm actually deciding to cut off the leaf because I think this was damaged by, um, like I mentioned, um, they are not, uh, they don't like extreme sunlight because um, extreme sun sunlight would burn them. And this was, I think this was burned or either uh, it is, uh, it was uh, having some pest on this uh, part. And uh, it had some infections because uh, I wasn't able to uh, spot it right away. So uh, before we try to dissect that infected leaf, uh, one other uh, characteristics is that uh, Sensiveria bitale, uh silver blue, the uh, <clears throat> the uh, adaxial leaf or the front part of the leaf is uh, very smooth to the touch the uh, back part of the leaf uh, is actually slightly rough the uh, leaf tips are wilted 
and you can see on the edge of the leaf that there is a brownish outline or a bloody red outline on uh, the leaf uh, sides of the leaf Late, later on we will uh, try to uh, focus on that so I can show you how it looks like but aside from that um, I think one thing that I can add is the pattern of the leaf the leaf of Sensevier Silver Blue is actually silvery in color and uh, you can see that it's mottled because you will see, uh, we'll discuss it later on when I focus again, but there, it's mottled, uh, the darker outline is dark green and the inner part is actually whitish in color or silvery, but in reality it's really uh, pale green in coloration. So, um, there is actually... Uh, a mutation of it but uh, it is uh, in my opinion there is uh, a discrepancy as to where it mutated from because I think uh, hold on up for a bit because I'll be back for just a moment all right so folks, this is actually a Betale mutation and uh, as I am checking the uh, pattern of the leaf, this is actually uh, a mutation wherein the dark outline has vanished and that's uh, what I call uh, the, the paling of uh, Sansevieria because uh, the darker parts cannot be uh, observed or seen. And what's left is the uh, pattern of the uh, bitale, which are the, these uh, longitudinal lights, which are dark. So, folks, uh, people are saying that uh, the, the name of this uh, sensory mutation is actually AS Silk. And it is, uh, it's claimed to be a mutation coming from uh, the Dragon Wing. But uh, Dragon Wing will be uh, actually um, featured right after Silver Blue. So... With regards to ASO being a mutation of, uh, of uh, Dragon Wing, actually, I would say that uh, ASO is a closer mutation of uh, Bitale Silver Blue rather than the uh, Dragon Wing that everyone is claiming. So, with regards to pattern, um, ASO is like a, a paling of uh, Silver Blue. So, Silver. Uh, ASL has no longer the dark green outline of the mottlings. It's just a pale uh, green coloration with the longitudinal lines. Longitudinal lines are very similar to the silver blues rather than the um, dragon wing. But uh, we will discuss ASL in a different uh, content. But uh, that's just uh, my uh, opinion. So it could be real that uh, ASL. Uh, came from dragon wing or it might be from silver blue but uh, everyone is claiming that as silk is coming from a uh, mutation of uh, dragon wing so going back <clears throat> i will actually try to dissect the uh, leaf part so uh, i'll be using this to, uh, knife and see if I can easily cut it because it like I mentioned it is very thick it is very thick actually that I'm not sure if I can easily cut it But I actually I think I did just careful not to cut which I already did cut all the other parts of the leaf all right need to uh, concentrate for a bit but uh, we successfully cut off that damage part and uh, like I mentioned, actually, they already have uh, some damage on them because, like I said, uh, th that part 
is the oldest part of the clump and it has been with me for five to six years never bloom for me so my guess is like i mentioned there are pests that are on it so i have been neglecting this uh, specimen that we are discussing so uh, i just decided to cut it off because uh, before i just saw it being a tiny uh, brown spot then it started to uh, be uh, larger so that's what you decide or how you decide to cut off the leaf because the infection will spread out it might reach to the core of the plant which we do not want to happen so again uh, let me show you how thick these uh, the belte leaf are I can't actually uh, easily slice them off that's how thick the leaf of the belte and that that's not actually the the thickest part I can cut off uh, another there uh, that's actually how uh, thick and uh, you cannot bend them if you try to bend them they will break I can't though I can't uh, I can't break them with my uh, this uh, strength that I'm doing right now to it or the pressure that I'm uh, applying to it it's not breaking so the sensory vitale folks is uh, sturdy and stiff uh, having a stiff and sturdy leaf so you can't bend them once they grow that way they stay that way you can't uh, move them uh, easily as you could because they're very sturdy they're very stiff and a very thick plant so uh, a little th uh, thinner than your aloes I might say so that's how the th uh, that's uh, how thick the Sansevieria uh, Betale silver blue so uh, folks uh, actually uh, we will be doing some maintenance on uh, this specimen uh, actually I'm planning to uh, dose it off with the uh, systemic uh, pesticide because it's in a clump and um, you can barely barely uh, flip over the leaf to check the uh, pest on it so that's a no-go to manually check the best way to take care of betalase is to uh, dose them off with systemic fungicides or pesticides to kill off the insects or the pests that are hiding on the underside of the leaf which is uh, cramped up in this um, clump so it's almost impossible to spot the pests that are on uh, your Sansevieria uh, betalase species so uh, aside from that folks i think i have nothing to add so uh before we do and i'm going to do some close-up like i mentioned uh there are reddish outline on the sides of the leaf and uh that's uh, how the uh leaf tips look like it's a wilty leaf tip and you you will see that this is the bloody red color that i was talking about it's uh, evident on the tip of the leaf and it is also on the sides of the leaf as to the uh, pattern uh, this is the pattern of the uh, Sansevieria silver blue I already discussed it and you will see the longitudinal lines on it aside from that uh, there are the back part has also some glaucous coating to keep the moisture off of the uh, leaf surface so Aside from that, uh, I have nothing to add. So, uh, folks, if you have any questions or suggestions, please uh, feel free to leave a comment below. And uh, if you uh, like what I have presented, uh, please uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, thank you, and you have a great day.